brothers, we have arrived at the playable anime's time skip. After ML Landy, after ML Yufin, after we canceled the Awaken potential system, SG decided to put all their future units, their future of their game, and take it to the next level. And we are witnessing that live. What is going on, y'all? I'm Valky, and today we got the what are we now april 2024 uh buff and developer notes and oh boy this one's a doozy so hang on tight we'll go right into it but also before i do don't forget guys if you see this line of text if a damage dealt increased or reduced we do not know how good the unit is going to be and this is just speculation so hang on to your hats and uh let's dive into it so one thing I like to highlight is right around when Navy Captain Lanny came out, there was this new level of power within the game. Um, and, and how do you justify that, right? Let's just make it very simple. Assuming every line of text that adds something to a character's kit is worth just one, right? It, it can be good, it can be bad, they're all worth one. So if you count up every single thing Landy has in her skill kit, she has about 10 things. And before Landy got here, the strongest unit in the game for the longest time was roughly Spectre Tenebria. Now, if you count up all the things that are in her kid, including the poison, cannot be counterattacked, hits two targets, uh, scaling attack, perma stealth, uh, stuns, CR pushback, and additional damage, all of those things only add up to seven. She was previously the best unit in the game, with seven things to her skill kit, when Navy Captain Lanny has 10. And ever since then, these new characters have just all been on a different level of power. Uh, each character being stronger than the last, they got more things going on to their kid, and it adds the complexity to them. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, every single game that gets played is subject to power creep. We are currently in year five of Epic Seven, um, you know, five out of ten of the ten-year plan, and if you really think about it, no game in their fifth year look the same as the game does back in year one of the game's release. So, power creep is not necessarily a bad thing, but an ine inevitability. And with that, I think there's a lot of argument to be made that this is going to be one of those patches, especially uh, meaningful to the development of the game. We're starting it off with ML Haste. Holy crap. This is what we've been waiting for. I mean, just look at the amount of things he got added to the kit. Just, just the sheer amount of buffs is not something you would expect for a buff. So that's how you know our boy's eating good, for real, for real. Um, so first of all, he now has an extra attack that heals. Um, so he has his own turn to turn sustain a Barrier plus immunity proc whenever an ally dies What <laughs> whenever an ally dies also gives his unique buff? Uh, which is effectiveness and speed basing it off of uh, enrage you can assume this is probably 20 effectiveness and 20 speed for a 60 gear score total um, Wow it also dispels first before he hits the, the, uh, the oh, dude, There's so many things going on the S3, the, the S3 dispels before he hits, and if he lands the kills, it revives all allies and gives them immortality for one turn. And when he has his unique buff, just, just you know, just a cool and crisp double damage, we'll, we'll take that, right? And all that it takes is he now penetrates defense when he attacks. And cannot trigger a critical hit. Like, wh what? That is insane. He only does pure damage ever now. I, 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 I mean, I think Hayes really landed the glow up after this time skip arc. Uh, it's always been pretty clear that he needed to be reworked if he wants to be relevant again. Since that old kid is designed for a different time, right? It was designed for the revive meta. It was designed to counter um, May Chloe. Designed to counter Arbiter Vildred back during their heyday. So, now, instead of countering opponents reviving, he counters allies dying. I still can't wrap my head around that. And since 
there's one big thing. The, there is no clause limiting that this extra attack only happens on his turn. That tells me it could happen anytime on counters, anytime he strips a buff. So after this buff slash rework, this is probably what your build is going to look like. Uh, this is probably what I'm playing. Uh, so now he's looking at counter, strip a buff, and then deal bruiser level damage and heals while water's origin keeps him alive since his activation condition is a teammate dying and that makes him the most prioritized target on a team right revivers are always the number one priority in a match and since he's the first character reveal from the time skip i think he's going to be a must-have unit not only for turn two players because i mean that's obvious I think he's actually a fairly competent cleave anchor as well. If you think about it, cleave usually made the most use out of having an anchor that is really hard to kill, especially if they revive, especially if they did a lot of damage and haste is ticking every single box. This, this might just be our new age apocalypse Ravi, if anything. Um, and, um, you know, it does sound bad if I phrase it that way, right? But think about all the other units that's going to be getting crazy buffs. He is still an HP scaling unit, which means he's weak to injury, which we still have a lot of in the game. But this is a very exciting change. It's something Haste needed. It's something the community asked for. And um, I think the final verdict is still reliant on seeing his numbers, uh, seeing how much damage he does, how much barrier it does, since everything is getting decreased and toned down because before you know he if he fully defense pen he hits pretty hard uh those barriers go kind of hard uh so it'll really have to depend on how good those numbers are sage ball just got some small numbers buffs here uh the strip and the sleep are both a hundred percent chance to land now and um you know sage ball's kind of been going through it a little bit getting roughed up by some modern day cleaves he's kind of not matching up well into uh Ludwig Rand doesn't really do particularly well into uh, Faithless Little Lydica if they have enough effectiveness, and then Green Lydica also didn't do him any favors. So the fact that he's catching a small buff here just to make it more reliable to use him, um, we take those. We take those. I mean, this is a patch where almost every buff is really exciting, and this is one of the more flat ones, and it's good for reliability. We like these, and we take these. All right, following Sage Ball, we have Fire Ravi. Uh, this is another one of those really ridiculous that adds 50 things to her buffs this patch. Uh, so the big thing for her is that she gets guaranteed crits now. Uh, guaranteed crits uh, serve two functions. One, it gives the character something like 136 gear score, depending on their base stats. And two, it makes them really good versus Navy Captain Landy, uh, a hugely important unit in this meta. Another change they made for her is that attack boost is permanently tied to her max HP now. Uh, so when she uses her ultimate, it no longer kills your own attack. Uh, but the drawback now is injury might actually do a huge number on her and uh, tone her power level down. That might be the intended counterplay with this character. Uh, she also has a built-in Crimson Seed. I know a lot of people were crying about that nerf. So whenever she gets critical hit, uh, she can now cleanse one debuff uh, once per turn. Uh, that's going to be really nice, especially for these bruisers that people are going to look to stun. Uh, injury is also baked into her S3. Uh, whew, okay, yeah, that is a good amount of things going for her. So before she got 75% attack from the buff, now it's just a permanent attack plus guaranteed crit. Assuming she gains around the same attack, she will be getting over 200 gear scores for free, with these guaranteed critical hits. Uh, now she's an injury bruiser that can self cleanse with guaranteed crit. Uh, this is a post time skip unit that's gonna make ML Landy look like Hody Jones. Uh, essentially what it is. Your build is probably gonna look something like this. Uh, and I think this is how it's going to look like for most people. A uh, high HP, high crit damage, a good amount of attack as your base, and a little bit of speed of defense to boot. She's going to be a very simple character to build. Um, because she gets so much free stats, I do think there is room for her to uh, maybe drop some attack, drop some HP, drop some crit damage, and be an ER counter-attack character. Uh, but that's not where my account is good. 
Uh, so that's not my playstyle. Uh, leave that to Japan server to figure out that build uh, when she gets buffed. Kane is next, and uh, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what they're cooking. He still looks pretty ass. Uh, there is a guy in champion rank called Grills. Uh, actually, I, I'm maybe doing him dirty. I see him in Emperor sometimes. Um, that guy cleaves with a bunch of fire unit. And uh, I would say I, 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 I am not an expert. This is not my character to talk about. This is Grill's story to tell. So um, find him, catch him in the Twitch community, catch him in the Discord communities. You'll see him around. Uh, ask him what he thinks about Kane. Uh, to me, he still looks kind of ass, but uh, hey man, Grills is a legitimate legend slayer with his Kane unit. So uh, I'm sure he'll have the sauce on how to play her. Okay, Green Bologna. So you could probably tell by the amount of lines they added to um, to this buff that she's probably not that crazy. Uh, she can soul burn for extra turnout, which just means you're supposed to S3 with her, land a bunch of defense breaks, and then soul burn her a bunch of times and then land them again, and she does more damage. That tells me she's not designed now to be a PvP unit, but rather uh, for any and all incoming PvE plays, she's probably going to be a lot better. Uh, defense break is the biggest damage amplification in the entire game, and uh, they made that more reliable for her, as well as having more ways to activate it, so um, she's probably going to be slightly better there. Okay. Oh, this one, is, this one's a little bit sneaky here. Holy moly. Celine finally got a real buff. And that includes starting battle stealth and granting stealth to caster for one turn with her S1. Those two things are huge. Her S2 got two things, right? It got a... It's what's essentially like a guiding light. And two, it gave her ten souls. And if you want to count the additional combat readiness as well, we count that. And on top of that, Selene has always been a unit that's known to do damage, but has been very unreliable and has her own counterplays right and now one the amount of counterplays against her has been massively reduced uh is extremely hard to counterplay stealth especially because so many things are single target uh if you look at specter tenebria she's strong for a long time because of stealth uh sea phantom politis one of the best openers in the game because you cannot disrupt her as she's stealthed so stealth is extremely disruptive to put on strong characters and green Celine uh, finally gets her time to shine I, I actually think she's already solid she's already got some good drafts where she could be played now but now that she can start the fight stealth and maintain her own stealth no joke yeah I low-key think she just power crept to shell tier's level and she might even match or be better than shell tier no cap uh, I mean, that's a big point, right? DPS units in Epic 7 live or die by how well they survive through all the all the bullshit in the game. Um, look at Spectre Tenebria, which, who gets perma-stealth. Navy Captain Lanny, who gets 70% crit reduction. Uh, and Genua, whenever he drops low enough HP, he cleanses and CR pushes himself, right? All of their passives have a way of letting them play the game better than other units. Um, you have a lot of characters that do a whole lot of damage, but they're just not as viable because they don't have ways to keep themselves safe, right? Oh yeah, she also gets a stun on her EE, but I, I kind of think the stun is whatever. Everybody's like, oh my god, you can't give her a stun. Nah, bro. She does so much damage now, and on top of that, she gets a damage boost. Just, just run the attack, hits highest attack with her intuition, and after that, like, they die. It's it's that simple. Um, I actually think the stun is kind of whatever, but that's just me. Uh, oh, last piece, Corinne also got a lot. Uh, so number one thing I notice is her S two has a minus combat readiness for by thirty percent, which is a lot, but I don't really think it matters. I think the damage dealt increased is what's really strong here. Uh, another thing that stands out is she lost her cleanse two debuffs. Uh, that's kind of huge because that cleanse two debuffs is what lets her play into uh, Peyra. It lets her play into Conqueror Lilius. So having lost that, she did lose a little bit of her ability to like play at that top speed, 
right? Because if you get outsped, um, it, it looks kind of bad for her. But what did get buffed was her S3's unique buff now ignores all mitigation and damage transfer. Uh, so all of these things combined, that tells me one thing. If you are a Aiden picker, you are a, a Aiden Arrowell picker, you are now in shambles. If your draft wasn't dead before Shell Tier, uh, your draft is definitely dead in two weeks. I guarantee it. So now S3 also got his cooldown lowered by a turn. Uh, and I, I just think it's a really nice utility to straight up be able to have attack up, uh, hit something real hard with extra hit chance, and uh, it ignores damage reduction, ignores damage share, and when you kill something, it tra transforms, and then also it uh, gives HP proportionate damage. Uh, and I think that's kind of huge. It, it's going to take away her ability to be able to race these openers and pick off their Aidens or pick off their squishy units, but after this, I think she actually becomes a really good you think about how blue Kisei was played back in the day, right? Uh, where you would maybe not play her super fast, but play her behind your hand guy so you can catch an attack buff. She brings her own attack buff, of course, but now you can play behind Alaya, get a perfect cleanse, and then give yourself attack buff and proceed to snowball the rest of the game. Okay, following LPK are our two artifact buffs. Uh, let's talk about Alexa's Basket first. Alexa's Basket is crazy good now. I think Alexa's Basket is just Benny Maru's Tachi, but 40% better. <laughs> uh, that's a really simple way to put it. You have a seven, up to 70% chance to get attack buff for a turn, and up to a 40% chance to get greater attack buff. I mean, simply said, that's just Benny Maru's Tachi, but 40% better. You have a small chance of whiffing, I think, through this, but, uh, man, I, th I think with these odds, you don't really care. You, we take these, right? And the characters I can see using them are characters that don't generate their own attack buff like fast green sid for example um assassin sid tempest surin and kisei it's like these moderately fast uh self-sufficient characters that need an attack buff and and can't generate it i think the real winner here is that it lets you divest your wind riders on characters that absolutely need them like your genua or maybe your gala lilius and it gives other characters that just need the damage aspect of this artifact uh, a different outlet for easy damage boost. And the last thing buffed here, even though this doesn't seem very huge, um, Abyssal Crown stun chance up to 30%, just for a cleaner number, uh, and for more chance to stun off of units like Fire Poly. And this tells me one thing. There is not going to be a unit anytime soon that counters ML Politus. Nothing anytime soon is going to counter her. I would slap this on your DGen Red Poly and just pray until Smile Gabe can figure out a way to print a balanced character that also beats C Phantom Politus. Spoiler alert, you can't. They're, they're, you can't beat her by being balanced. That's not how this works. In any case, uh, your Fire Poly is just going to be a slightly, slightly more reliable counter to ML Poly. Anyways, that is this entire wave of bad, uh, buff notes. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I'm actually so excited, and I think you guys can tell. Um, when somebody is, is excited about the incoming buffs, their gear for the new units are ready before the buffs even touch the game like my builds are ready my haste is ready my fire ravi is ready and bro my Celine, my Celine was born ready she's been ready for years and she's ready to wreck faces and uh yeah uh let me know what you guys think about some of these buffs let me know how you guys plan on playing some of these units um if you guys have questions feel free to leave them in the comments as well uh, or hop in the discord to discuss them but that's going to be it from me for today I will try to have some end of the season content come out. Uh, hopefully soon, before the final week starts. Any case, have a great one, guys. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya, see ya.